I'm good. How are you? Not too bad. Come in. amount of people in the country that go over. I mean, I've done it. Makes two of us. A lot, a lot, of, a lot of times. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, going out for drinks, obviously. <laughs> Where are you going? Um, just out in town. Oh, so you're not going to Sean's birthday? Yeah, that's where I'm going. Uh, what are you doing? It's just, I don't know. I have no idea. I'm not going to Sean's birthday, though. Where do you think the banks get their money from? Uh, interest. Yeah. Where does that come from? Charging people. So when they put their money in or they go overdrawn, they like charge you ridiculous and amounts. Like interest. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what they get? That's what we pay them. Do you know that if you go do overdrafts and things like that, yeah. and then they do bank charges? Yeah. Obviously, the amount of people they must have yeah, got an overdraft like and saving paying them. It's ridiculous. You like go one pound over and you, get, you have to pay thirty pound back. That's probably a lot of money as well. Yeah. The course. amount of people in the country that go over. I mean, I've done it. Makes two of us. A lot, a lot, <laughs> a lot of times. Definitely. <laughs> money is just. It's a concept. It's a bit of a farce, and yet it's the thing that dictates and controls so much. Don't they it. use our money to like invest? Yeah. And then. Oh yeah, I guess. Yeah, so they while they put our money, like they our use savings. It. Yeah. yeah. So technically, our money is never actually anywhere. There. It's just it's floating everywhere. around, and they're using it for whatever they want. To do. Then uh, they charge the people lots of money for borrowing the money. Uh, that people then have to borrow more money to pay back. <laughs> and it's just a perpetual cycle of borrowing money that no one's really got and doesn't really exist because it's just really large numbers written down on a sheet. When somebody takes out a loan, banks create new money electronically by typing numbers into their account. 97% of all the money in our economy is created in this way, as people take out loans from banks. The more loans people take, the more debt there is, and the more money there is. <laughs> the shocking fact is, if nobody went into debt, there would be almost no money in the economy. This means that in the UK alone, together we pay the banks £192 million in interest every single day. <laughs> That's a completely sickening number. Paying £192 million a day in interest to the banks is crazy. I think it's outrageous, man. They're talking about things that I can't. They're incomprehensible. Yeah, it's yeah. Not, yeah. That's such a huge amount of money when there's supposed to be like a recession and no one's got any money and everyone's struggling and banks are making that a day. Exactly. Like, how can we be paying 192 million pounds in interest daily? Like, I would have thought that. Especially Maybe money. monthly, not daily. That's crazy. And because the debt is held mostly by the bottom 90% and wealth mostly by the top 10%, paying this interest transfers money from the bottom 90% of the population to the very top 10%. It sucks wealth and income from the rest of us up to the very lucky few. That's ridiculous. So as long as we have to rent the money we use from the banks that create it, we'll have to keep paying this huge interest bill and the gap between the richest and the rest of us will keep increasing. What do you need that money for? Pay for their Bentleys, pass money under the table to keep people quiet. And let's think about the state of employment in Britain today. One in five workers, more than 20% of workers, is on less than a living wage. We're two people that go out and work hard. Young yeah. people that go out and work hard. 40 hours a week, 40 hours a week. Or more, plus more because I need it, but then you think loans, the only reason people pay, take a loan out is because they're desperate. Yes, yeah, part, yeah. part of life really. <clears throat> in, but us taking a loan out helps rich people, basically. Pays the tops. I'm top not taking a loan, definitely not. Definitely <laughs> no, not, no, no way, <laughs> never. <laughs> That's for sure, knowing that now. If there's anything I can say to people, it would be this one thing that I'm about to say, which is, 
they have to understand how the world is run and it's completely connected with the financial system finance and politics it's the same thing you have got a certain limited number of central banks and those banks make money they press buttons they used to print it at one time they make money what happens with that money is that it becomes debt once they lend this money to people it has to be paid back and the get, it gets paid back in the form of real wealth. Now then that real wealth comes from digging up the earth. Getting everything from the earth, it's finite. This is why we're in a problem, but it's finite wealth that they suck up, that they get paid for in return for money that they create out of air. Banks, it's like how they're allowed to do that. Especially protected by governments. While the money runs out for the rest of us, the largest private banks still thrive. This is because they get the biggest subsidy of them all. The license to print money. Hard to believe? Martin Wolf, the chief economics editor at the Financial Times, said it recently. The essence of the contemporary monetary system is the creation of money out of nothing by private banks off foolish lending. You heard that right. Private banks create money out of nothing. Then they loan it to us and ask for interest on top. If you've ever wondered why the bank buildings around the world saw higher than any palace or spire ever did, you now have the answer. But the banks don't simply print money using secret printing presses in their basements. They don't have to. Like so many other things these days, printing money has now gone digital. Mm. With the popular use of debit cards, electronic fund furs and internet banking, only 3% of the money in the UK is now made of paper and metal coin. I never use cash. Never. The never. other 97% is entirely in computers. Electronic money is convenient for everyone, but it's especially convenient for the private banks, since they own, run and control the entire digital money system. And what do they do with this special privilege? Do they channel new money, the blood supply of the nation, towards the things we need, like hospitals, schools, universities and public transport? Not if it doesn't make a profit for them. Instead, they use their license to print money to gamble on the financial markets and push house prices out of reach of ordinary people by pumping hundreds of billions of pounds into risky mortgages. This is exactly how the banks cause the financial crisis. And now the rest of us are being asked to pay for it. How do you feel about watching that? It makes you feel a bit sick and angry because it just seems like they've made this happen. You know, it's not just something that has just happened. I think they've just playing, been playing this game, playing it, playing it, playing it. I just don't understand just... how they like, why is there no law to say I know. you can't do this? You're driving the country like there's nothing down. to control it. Yeah. There's like no control there and they can just do they what, just print what, they want. what they want. For some reason, not that surprised that the public are absolutely shafted for the benefit of, you know, the higher echelons of society. That's not, it's nothing new to me, to be honest. Um, still frustrating, obviously. It's ridiculous, the, the statistics that they say. It's 97% of money and they can completely control it and they're basically making money. 3% of it is actually cash, 97% is in a computer. Yeah, exactly. That's what, <laughs> it's ridiculous. I can't get my head around it. One it's easy when you think one. about it, because they are basically using the people who need it, need the money, yeah. who take out the loans and that's what they and feed off, money of. off them. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Especially when we're in the bottom 90%. Yeah, and then there's that like 10% at the top going like that, moving up and up and up, and there's us stuck where we are. So basically, us getting in debt pays then. Us getting in debt pays, helps the country. It makes me angry. It hasn't really changed since like, a feudal society. It was always like the peasants were being sucked for their money yeah. and their labour by the landlords. And now it's less the landlords, although still landlords, but uh, more the bankers are now the landlords. It, it's basically... It, you think of your bank and you think of all the, the adverts and all the adverts they create and they say, oh, we're here to help you, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And they do all that. But then when you hear something like that, the 100% all they're doing, like they said about the hospitals and uh, like universities and stuff like that, 
they won't put any profit into that because they don't make any profit out of it. It's a complete money making scheme. Banks, it's all about making money. Us putting money into banks and money making scheme. That's all it is. So all the adverts and everything about we're here to help you and blah blah blah. It's surprising, Crazy. isn't it? Because you you can't do anything without a bank account now. So basically we've been told that we're getting robbed. But there's nothing we can do about it. <laughs> basically, yeah, is it, isn't it? Yeah. I think also I think they're making use of the fact that a lot of people wouldn't necessarily know about this. Mm -hmm. So there's people aren't really aware that all of this is happening. Yeah. And then when you actually sit and look at it like that, yeah, it does make you feel a bit sick that know. you know you work hard and you pay your taxes and do all of that, and then actually your bank, who you know you hopefully trust and rely on mm -hmm. to keep your money safe, is actually just taking the piss, really. Yeah. <laughs> uh, about ninety-seven to ninety-eight percent of money um, that's that's created is is created um, as bank bank debt money, you could call it. Um, when banks issue money into circulation as, as loans, essentially. Um, this is a very poorly understood fact. It's not a conspiracy theory, it's not a, um, it's not a crackpot theory, it's the way the Bank of England describes the process. When banks make loans, they create new money. When you can't deal with poverty when you have a financial system and a money system that distributes money from the poor to the very rich. Any distribution that you try and do in the opposite direction is, um, you know, it's effectively pissing in the wind. If you look at issues like, you know, increasing inequality, one obvious way to tackle inequality is to have, say for example, a redistributive tax system. You know, you tax the rich, you give some money to the poor, you move a bit of money down, down the scale. Um, that's all very well. But if you completely overlook the fact that there's another redistributive system which is taking money from the poor and giving it to the rich, then you're not really going to tackle this inequality. Do you think that would help society if they paid more tax? Or do you think they deserve just to keep making more profits? Obviously they deserve to make a profit, they're a business. They've, they've gone out there, if I, if I wanted to go and make my own business and I was successful, you're obviously you, money, you're there to make money, that's the whole point you're doing it. But I don't know how much they earn, I don't know how much they make, but there's obviously a lot of big businesses out there that, that could, you know, there should be a bracket, like the tax bracket that we get, I completely don't agree, but I don't know what the bracket is of businesses, but, you know, if you get over a certain amount, like you said, you, you work for the third biggest in what Europe you said. Yeah, but... So, they, you know, they're at the top end, they should get taxed more than people that are just starting out. But then, say for example, they're up here, yeah. For example, on their on their earnings, mm. and we're obviously down here on our earnings. For example, now if they paid us more, surely that would balance. But they don't want that. Do they? they don't want their workers to be making as much as not make as much, the but then or... bring it slightly because the gap is too big. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's like everything, though, isn't it? Look at what happens to debt. It will rise and it will keep rising. And the faster the economy is growing, the faster the debt will rise. And then give it another three to five years. We'll be back where we were, you know, the debt will become too much, people will start defaulting again. Um, it's kind of the system that we're locked into now is we can't, we can't grow the economy without growing the debt. And the debt is the very thing that will bring down the economy. The only option going forwards is to reform it, to stop banks from creating money as debt. Can you pin down exactly what would keep investors happy, make them feel more confident? Uh, that's a tough one. Um, for most traders, we don't really care that much how they're going to fix the how they're going to fix the economy, how they're going to fix the uh, the whole situation. Our job is to make money from it. And personally, I've been dreaming of this moment for three years. If you know what to do, you can make a lot of money from this. Uh, I, I I had a confession, which is uh, I go to bed every night. I dream of another recession. I dream of another moment like this. I dream of another recession. I dream of another moment like this. You can make a lot of money from this. infuriating actually having someone say I dream of a recession another recession so he dreams of another recession because he makes money from the recessions is that yeah. what he was saying yeah how do you feel about that uh, the, I can't believe he had the audacity to just publicly admit that so brazenly that's an absolute joke so yes. he's wishing a recession right on the country for example which puts us in 
dire straits, for example, but then still helps these little ten percent of people. Yeah. Because he's in that ten percent. Because he's in that ten percent. Even said in the video, I don't care. So, if he doesn't care, how is the country going to improve? It's like I do wonder how. How would I feel if I was on the other side? If I was one of the rich? Yeah. Like, would, would I see you, it? Like, would you want to do do something to help, or would you just want to make more and more and more? I know it's just the greed. It's pure yeah. greed. Yeah. It's it's making me think. Like, what's the point? With the way that man's attitude. Yeah. Like, I don't give a shit about no one else except myself. Fair enough, yeah, his family's having a lovely life. But... We're not. <laughs> it's, no, it's, I'm not saying we're not, because obviously life... We like, do I, can, I, yeah. I, do, I enjoy myself and everything, don't get me wrong. But it's the wider picture going Pieces. forward later on in life, really. Because Pieces. as a youngster, I mean, you're not really... Well, you're not really worried about the economy and that, are you? You don't really no. think about it, but... As soon as you start thinking about it. Now you actually sit here and think, it's shambolic, really, when you're looking yeah, at it like that. There's no thought of how other people are meant to live, how other men other people are meant to survive, yeah. and, you know, the fact that we work hard as well. Yeah. And they're just there, you know, taking the opportunity and, 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 and actually enjoying it yeah. in some weird, messed up way. I know. It just, I just... I don't know, it makes me really angry seeing that. <laughs> I don't know, it's, it is weird. How, how, how has the CSR affected your way of life and people in the kind of income bracket? I mean, we read today you've just approved the salary, this £8.3 million pound, um, pay package for the new Lloyds boss. How, how is it going to affect your way of life? I mean, the PM says it's going to affect all our way of life. Those women are very clear it's affecting their way of life. How is it going to affect your way of life? Well, to put it in its simplest, I lose my child benefit, or rather my wife does. You're paying child benefit? Yes, of course. But what? Because uh, I've got two children. So he's a millionaire. But, uh, like everyone else who's a high rate taxpayer. Yeah. You know, from 2013 onwards, you do know, one... And that's going to affect your way of life, is it, Chancellor? Well, you know, I've noticed in these uh, encounters that you often play the man, not the ball. Is he for real? <laughs> but we don't know the circumstances, I guess, of why he needed... Why would he... I don't understand why he would have claimed child benefit if he's a millionaire. If you've got over a million in the bank, then why do you need... 50 quid a week from when yeah. someone that goes a lot further for someone else. He's an outer arsehole, <laughs> to be honest with you. Yeah, um, to put it in its plainest that's terms. The, yeah, yeah, it's the plainest terms for it. Especially because they're now cutting benefits that actually benefit the poor. So yeah. someone like him taking that is taking it away from yeah, someone else. I know. Our thing. Chancellor George Osborne has been congratulating himself about the economy. Child but finally, he has off. lost the battle. In his austerity war, he has failed to block the so-called Robin Hood tax, aimed at taxing the transactions of multi-billion pound banks. The Tobin-type financial transaction tax has already been agreed by 11 members of the Eurozone, but Osborne tried to say it was illegal and that it would impoverish the city of London. The tax of 0.05% could raise enough in the UK in one year to pay for all the efficiency savings, or government cuts, to the NHS in this parliament. Or maybe the minuscule tax could be used to alleviate the misery of the quarter of all children who live in poverty and help stem the exponential increase in those surviving by going to food banks. I don't understand why he would block it. Yeah. I, don't, I don't understand the reasoning, yeah. I mean, unless it's because he's wealthy and he's in with the banker boy. We've got a plan which is working. I think what's absolutely crucial here is recognising that what our plan involves is balance. It's basically going back to the, the thing with the banks. He's, he's not allowing them to be, to be taxed, so he's basically backing them up. Plus, he's, he's taking his benefit. Plus he's got, he's kind of got me speechless a little bit yeah, in the fact I'm shocked. Watching footage that, that does kind of lay it out like that does incite a level of kind of angst and uh, just anger, basically. And I'm like, yeah, I actually, you know, it actually makes me physically feel frustrated. It's a, they've all got the same mentality, that the, the, all these top percent, they've all got the same mentality. They have money, they want more money, they don't want anyone that hasn't got money to have any more money. It's great. That is what it is. Your officials said that uh, there will be families who will have to lose their homes and move. How many children, as a result of no, no. what you are doing, will have to lose their homes and move? Well, no one 
should be without housing when we are paying. No, but how much? How uncomfortable you feel? Can't even money answer. Yeah. As I say, we we know the numbers uh, of uh, households uh, uh, affected uh, uh, by uh, the uh, benefit cap. They are going to get up to twenty thousand pounds a year in housing benefit. Will homelessness increase or decrease? They never answer the question. They don't. Let me it. just remind you, Mr. Man, of what the Labour manifesto says. No, no, I'm no, asking well, you. I'm, I'm no, no, you're saying very. Change. Hold on. Will homelessness increase? I'm, I'm not making. I'm not making a full. Answer the question. All I'm saying to you is that there will be fewer full-time police officers. Will there be... Uh, John, can we now have I'm a... Trying some, I'm trying to get some answers. I don't know what the Labour Party policy is on manifesto. I want to know, will there be... Well, will there be more homelessness? I want to know, will there be right. reductions in full-time police right. officers? John, on uh, police John. numbers, both the Labour Party and the Conservative Party and the Liberal Democrats have accepted that there will be fewer police numbers. This was conceded by the Labour Party before the general election. Again, he's like blaming, he's not taking, he's not owning up to it. Will there be any reduction in special needs provision for children in mainstream schools as well your budget? Well, the special needs education. Just answer the question. We are looking at this and, and the role of special schools. So you've asked a very specific question, which is frankly goes to special needs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, special education needs. You know, that is a matter, obviously, for the relevant minister. But we are looking at the appropriate balance between special needs schools. Well, I'm provision provision and provision. Provision. That's not his question, though. No. He's not answering it. Is, well, Chancellor's got all day, he's already told me. And I just want to know about the implications <laughs> of these years. You haven't got well, the greatest respect. Yeah, well, will, respect. There be fewer, will there be fewer fire stations in the country? With the greatest respect, Mr. Mann. Well, will there be fewer they, fire I would, stations? I, would, I, would, I would say that we uh, both need to take responsibility for the difficult decisions since you voted for the various budgets. Oh, that's it. He's just will throwing it back at him. Suits, ties, middle-aged males. We're not. We're not. I am bringing these exchanges. We're not, bringing, we're not, yeah, we're, we're not getting. We're not yet had an answer the, on the whether or not these reductions. The public will have happen. noted the exchanges between you. Yeah, but and, we're here to get answers. Well, I think David Rutley. Various answers. But this is why I find it always really hard to watch because they just all talk over each other and questions aren't really answered and the interviewer yeah. always just keeps asking a question. Oh, he's so, that was such a mess. <laughs> Pathetic. What are we talking about today, George? Oh, I like well, it's, it's the self-attribution fallacy, which is the idea. What is that? That already sounds confusing. Yeah. Self-attribution fallacy. Well, I'm going to attribute <laughs> myself with something. It's about attributing to yourself all the things which made you successful. Rich people deserve it. Yeah, exactly. So, so you're the super rich person. And then you say, I got here on my own two feet to do my, through my own efforts, forgetting that. You inherited loads from your parents. You you had this incredible good private education. You mm. you might have got got the, all these. These governments are anti-people. It's not going to help people, and it's crazy. And everything they say, point by point, is completely untrue. So there's a story that if you're rich, you deserve to be rich. Mm. And that story means that if you're not rich, you don't deserve to be rich. And that means exactly. that everything's the way that it should be and nothing should change. But that's just a story. It's not real. It used that's to be right. the story was black people should be poor. It used to be the story yeah. gay people shouldn't be able to get married. But those stories changed. Let's have a look at a clip. We know that profit, wealth creation, tax cuts, enterprise, these are not dirty, elitist words. They're not the problem. They really are the solution because it's not government that creates jobs, it's businesses. It's businesses that get wages in people's pockets, food on their tables, hope for their families, and yes, success for our country. And yes, success for our country. <laughs> a common belief is that it's good for us all if a small group of people earn an enormous amount of money. The theory is that their wealth trickles down to the rest of us. That's not true. But this is, is a myth. Thank you. In reality, money is sucked up from all of us into the pockets of a very small group of people. So that's a sort of a, a, a David Cameron is espousing a popular modern myth there. Yeah. And you have to espouse it and espouse it and espouse it when you are faced with this massive inequality which we've got at the moment. So you have to constantly bang home the idea that the people at the top are the people who got there through their amazing genius and talent and efforts um, and that they deserve to be there and that this is the correct social order. There is no shortcut to a land of opportunity. That's there is so no not true though. Nice. They are just born privileged. Yeah. You build it 
business by business, school by school. Person by person. He puts business before school. Right. Businesses was the first yeah. suggestion there from yeah. David Cameron. Well, the interesting thing now in business is that the people who get to the top, they elbow and fight their way up to the top, not, not through having any particular enterprise, but just they're often just really brutal people, get to the top and then they can scoop vast amounts of the money that flow through that corporation would previously perhaps have gone to the workers. I don't think businesses are to credit for giving us a better standard of living. I mean, business is motivated by finance, and I think a standard of living should uh, transcend, you know, finance and be, you know, about quality of life and quality of happiness. And happiness shouldn't depend on money. Should, you know, stability and well-being and peace of mind and health physical health and mental health, they're paramount for happiness. And a business has absolutely no concern with our mental well-being at all. It's absolute bullshit if they think that we're, you know, going to think that businesses are somehow concerned with our quality of life. That's fucking shit. The UK now has 104 billionaires, top of the global league. London alone has 72 billionaires, the top city in the world. Meanwhile, West Wales and the Valleys is also in the top, in the top five poorest regions in Western Europe. Is the Prime Minister at all concerned? UK or is he like feeling... Labour's Lord Mandelson, intensely relaxed about people getting filthy rich? So David Cameron's words were, big business is what's putting food on the table, money in the pocket, yeah. and something else. Uh, as far as I can see, uh, it's not particularly doing any of those, especially when, like, no one in my family even has a house they can call their own. Um, how big business is helping provide us with a place to live, right, which is the most basic thing that anyone should be able to have is a space that they can live in that they own and is theirs. Like, in a way, isn't it, George, it's the myth of the individual, that you are an individual, you're on your own, and what you achieve is down to you, and if you don't achieve stuff, that's, right. that's your fault, and don't expect but us to pick up the pieces. The classic exponent of this is the richest woman in the world, Gina Reinhart, this Australian woman who, who's this mining magnet. Um, and she says, you know, anyone could be a millionaire if the poor got off their butts and stopped smoking so much and drinking oh so much God, and socialising so much. She actually said that. Like now, it helps to inherit one of the world's biggest iron ore mines from your dad and a few billion dollars on top of that. Some people, I mean, you look at some people, yeah, they work their socks off for it, mm. you know, and fair play to them. But yeah, then the sort of people it are. annoys me when these, like, their mums and dads have got millions and they live off of their fortune. Mm -hmm. They're all the donuts yeah. on Tawi. They ain't <laughs> earned their money. No. It's all been it's given uh, to them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, no, I'm just, yeah. That's a prime example, really. Because yeah, they've got... They, you look at them and you think, you're living such a... The life of Riley, really. really. Yeah. There was a study um, done, done by academics of um, 39 corporate executives. They did the sort of full psychometric profiling. And they found that on certain indicators of psychopathy, they were not only more extreme than the average patient in the broad, more secure hospital. They were more extreme than the average patient who had been diagnosed with psychopathic personality disorders <laughs> in the broad, more special hospital. Now, basically, if you're born poor, and you have psychopathic tendencies, you're quite likely to end up in prison. If you're born, po born rich and have psychopathic tendencies, you go to business school. There's Margaret Thatcher, who made, <laughs> cut the, to Boris Johnson. <laughs> who made the key observation about charity in her famous analysis of the parable of the Good Samaritan. He wouldn't have been much use to the chap who fell amongst thieves, she noted, the Good Samaritan, if he had not been rich enough to help. Yeah, I don't, I don't take Boris Johnson seriously as a politician, I just think he's, he looks like he would be a nice guy that you could get on with. But I don't know, like, as I said, I don't know anything about his policies. No. Or what... Is that, is that not the danger of modern politics, then? Yeah. It is. It is. It's, what is it, personality's not... What's the word? Personality's not... Oh, I can't remember the word. <laughs> it begins with T. Personality is not... No. But when you're choosing a politician, it's... Paramount. No. Let me think of it. <laughs> but that's the whole thing no, about policy, policy. Policy, not personality. That's, that's what you've it. got to yeah. vote for. But yeah. people see, and oh, I like him, or he's good yeah. looking, I'm going to vote for him. Yeah. You, you need to vote on what people are actually 
going to bring to the country. What they're saying rather yeah. than what they appear How to they be. Come across. The link between psych psychopathy psych psych psychopathic psychopathic tendencies and leadership doesn't surprise me particularly because all the great dictators of the world were psychopaths. Psychopathy as in the condition. Yeah, it just makes you a bit <laughs> clever. A lot of psychopaths they are, are actually because they're clever enough to to, 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 cover to make people believe one thing about yeah. themselves. Because you always hear like, oh he seemed like such a friendly neighbour. <laughs> he always said hi to me in the morning. Yeah. But then they find the dead body in yeah, the garden, the buried. Patio. Yeah. No, um, it, like no regard or uh, what's what a like compassion. Yeah. For other for people around you, it's like a dehumanization yeah. of them. I did read an interesting article that was um, that looks at the type of people that are necessary to facilitate that. So yeah, it takes the psychopath at the top, but it also takes the drones who are scared at the bottom to reinforce those mm -hmm. political ideals basically so it, it you know it is a it is a two-way game if we're, we're, yeah it's the people underneath them who are willingly accepting or unwillingly but still accepting <laughs> yeah this is self-attribution fall fallacy what can we do to oppose that story how can we mm. tell a different story well the most important thing is to recognize it and to recognize the basic truth that if wealth was the inevitable result of hard work and enterprise every woman in africa would be a millionaire what what's your opinion on boris johnson do you know what i don't no, I just think he's a bit of a clown, to be fair. He makes me, every time I watch him, he just make, I don't listen. Every time I watch him, don't you find you don't listen, you just laugh? I don't know, I, I'm, I think I'm against him on that. I think he's more truthful. He, the, the way he comes across, he's not like all the others. He's, he's sort of, I don't know, yeah, I know what you mean because he is he very me, extreme. I can't, I can't very, take him like, serious. That's the yeah. only my problem. I'm not saying like he's not right, but the way he is, he just makes me laugh. That's all, he just, <laughs> he just, he just look at him. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean, but I don't. I think he's a lot more. He's a lot more like, he's like the working people. He's not as uptight, and he's not up his own ass. Like I think it's just his haircut that makes me laugh. To be honest, obviously, really? I know he's transparent on what he says and he's honest, but it does tickle me with what he looks like. I I find it easier to relate to him in some way, and I don't know why, because it's yeah. like you see him riding his bike or like you know, yeah, like getting involved with the people. Yeah, and like doing things that you would never see. Yeah. George Osborne or, or David Cameron do. I don't believe that economic equality is possible. Indeed, some measure of inequality is essential for the spirit of envy and keeping up with the Joneses and so on. That is a valuable spur to economic activity. Okay, that just is weird as a sentence. Just revisit what he said there. So he doesn't believe that economic stability is possible for reasons of keeping up with the Joneses and this and that, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, what was that? What? Bit? I mean, that's bollocks. So he's saying that it's good to have people have... doing better than you because it spares you on. Yeah. He doesn't think there will ever be equality. It's a bit depressing, isn't it? I know. It's a weird thing to say. Mm. What do you think of funny man Boris Johnson now? It's just, they're all the same. Politicians are all the same. There's no room for that sort of attitude from someone in his standing, nor in this modern day and age. Like, that's such a, a dated standpoint. Like, it just doesn't wash. It, it's not relevant. That, that can't be, that can't be expressed by someone who we consider to be a leader. That's not okay. He's just stating what capitalism is down to, like, the bone, the, down basically. To the bone, yeah. yeah. It's just the in, individual competition. It's a rat race, it's dog eat dog. And, and that's just the that, way it has to and be. And that, that's the way it has to be for because and that's he's coming one of the from people someone that's who's doing well out of it. Exactly, that's coming from someone who's in a position to sort of maybe influence some change. And he's like, actually, no, we need to protect the interests of him, him, his interests. We need to protect his interests, basically. Why? Are you surprised about what you're hearing? I'm very surprised. Oh, I think we, we deserve to know this. You know, I'm extremely surprised. But then again, okay. the, what comes with wealth is power, and these are powerful people, and they're not going to make themselves look bad, are they? Of course they're not. But uh, the thing is, we all, like, you probably did the same as me. I, I've always sort of 
thought that anyway, without knowing it. I've always thought you always think that there's going to be a lot of a lot of like poor people and not a lot of rich people, and we're getting sucked for it. I've always thought that without knowing it, but. Now you've you've seen the stats and it's just it's ridiculous to put it into numbers. Do you feel cheated? Hundred percent. Oh yeah, but I always have anyway. But it's still. I knew it was in a bad situation. I knew there was bad things going on that we don't know about. But mm. I didn't know it was on a scale set. No. Like not I at didn't realise it was this bad. Not at all. There's definitely an awareness amongst young people for sure, but it's hard to pinpoint who's responsible and why doing what exactly and how change can be instigated or yeah. how anyone can protect themselves. Like, it, it feels like there's nothing within our direct power. It's made me care kind of seeing it like this because I don't involve myself with politics, in, no. uh, you know, at all. I think I have a real sort of lack of interest in it. I mean, I hadn't been registered to vote until this year and I did. I'm now registered to vote. Did you um, not vote in the last one? No. Voting could change it, but I feel as a youngster, what kind of guidance do you get mm. and help or advice on how to vote? Because obviously, yeah, I watch about it all, yeah. but it's not in the terms that I understand. No, not so. It's all put out there in all this posh gobbledygook, but I call yeah. it really, if they put it into the language that I could understand slightly, maybe, mm. then I would be able to go, right, yeah, I'm going to vote for them. Has, vote for I them. don't think there's no relevance to us, does it? No. Nah. What they, the, the things they're talking about has no relevance. They don't tell you this stuff. Well, no, because I don't um, know anything like that. Are you going to vote? Yeah, this is my first year. I've Why? What's before. made you do it? Just because I want to have a say, and I think that we've got the vote, so we should use it, and you can't sit back and moan about stuff if you're not going to vote. So, what's changed? Something's shifted. I didn't vote before because I didn't really, I didn't really know about it that much. I didn't really sh show interest in it. I didn't really care. But now I'm getting older. Mm. I'm starting to look into it more, in the fact of a better way of life, and for a better country, basically. Yeah. So I kind of want to. What's the word for it? I want to. I want to be part of it to hopefully make it improve. But after seeing that, can you make, I mean, it makes me think, is it worth it? Yeah, well, I'm not, I've said to you before, I'm not, still not voting. I don't think I'm gonna vote until I completely understand it. And even if I do still completely understand it, I don't think that, I don't know, from what I've, from what I've seen, I don't know a great deal as a man, but what I've seen so far, I don't, can't, you seem to have to compromise good points with bad points Yeah. all the time. And uh, for me, I don't really want to be part of Part of that it does make you but think. But then the, the, you do think there's no other option to make it any better, is there? It's like you're sort of getting backed into a corner. Are our two votes really going to make the difference? That's the way you got to look at it as well. But the thing is, it ain't just our two votes. It's like most people, well, most of our friends, do you know what I mean? Most of our friends don't vote. None of them do. That's what I'm saying. So it ain't just us two, is it? It's everyone.